Hi, Namo Myoho Rengekyo. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I've got a real short Go Show here. Um, just another example of uh, Nichiren's uh, uh, support of his Sangha. Um, and because this is short, I'm going to take a minute again to, um, to raise the uh, important point, I think, um, of these, uh, all of these videos that I put online. A lot of them for the last year have been uh, Gosho, uh, letters from Nitrin. Um, but this channel also has uh, the same kind of analysis on, uh, on the Lotus Sutra, chapter by chapter, the Virmala Kirti, the Lankavatara, the perfection of, perfection of wisdom. Um, what I'm trying to say is the channel has, is not just a uh, Nietzschean letter uh, uh, study channel. It also has, because of Bu the way we're supposed to practice Buddhism broadly, uh, and by Nietzschean's own words, uh, we should be studying uh, broadly uh, the scholarship of Buddhism. Uh, it is my goal to expand this channel to uh, the maximal uh, resource as I can uh, to practice Buddhism correctly. And so uh, in that spirit, so far I've had a few sutras I've read through uh, and I've also got a lot of intermittent subjects, as you'll notice, along with the Go Show, I'm also occasionally putting in little aha moments and insights that I get either through um, rereading or reading anew uh, some of these letters and certain uh, subjects or ideas might pop out that I want to spend a little uh, isolated time talking about. Um, a lot of that, though, comes from your comments so thank you for that. Keep doing it because uh, when you ask questions, even if it seems like same old, same old to you or something you've heard many times but you doubt or whatever, um, the way you ask the question or, or the actual question, um, uh, and I've done this several times of, of late, I've had uh, comments or questions that I thought, oh, I haven't really talked about that for a while. Let me do a video just on that. Um, and so that's very helpful to the Sangha, to all of us, right? So, um, um, so that's about the channel. That's about encouraging you to look at the playlists on my, uh, YouTube, uh, uh, channel page. Um, if you go to the playlist, they're labeled by subject like, uh, Gohanzan. Sometimes you just have questions about Gohanzans. Uh, I have and continue to add specific videos to that playlist. Um, so you can sort through those or watch them all or whatever. Uh, Daimoku, um, so on and so forth. Uh, ego versus... A anyway, um, so th that is to say there's a lot more going on on this uh, video channel than simply um, Go Show. I also want to let you know that I'm going to start reading through some other sutras and adding them uh, to the channel. And I want your input. I want you to tell me um, the sutra that I keep coming across that I wish I knew more about. Um, then let me know what that is uh, and I will uh, endeavor to see if it's in my library, number one. And number two, if not, if I can hunt down a, a good scholar, uh, uh, scholastic version, a scholarship version of that um, sutra, and I will uh, dissect it for you, for me and you. All right. Um, now, the, the thing about the Go Show uh, is I made a resolution to myself um, a year or so ago, maybe two years ago, that uh, I'd read a lot of Gosho, a lot of uh, Nietzsche's writings. Um, Nietzsche's writings are a, a special opportunity for us as Buddhists because uh, we have so many of his writings still preserved. Um, yes, there are a lot of them, but one way to think about it is not solely as a, a huge compendium of letters. 
but they actually uh, are an asset for study because his letters fall into some solid, uh, like about four different categories. There are the very, like this letter, very personal letters. And in these letters, we kind of learn how to be good bodhisattvas with people who are non-practitioners or early practitioners or young practitioners, uh, just lay believers or friends, how we want to treat them and, and uh, how we might communicate with them. So these letters are a form of training in that respect. Uh, then there are letters that are more um, doctrinal, more uh, scholastic in their nature, uh, teaching um, monks uh, within uh, Nichiren's own order, right? And they're more, uh, they may also be specific, but they'll be specific in terms of the Lotus Sutra and the teachings of Buddhism. So we have a different level of learning about uh, our communication and uh, uh, our study of the Buddhist material, right? And then there are uh, letters that are written to high scholarship, his uh, his elite uh, group of disciples, his his extended arms of teaching, his senior uh, monks underneath him, um, who are not only uh, responsible for teaching to the general public and lay believers, but also to other monks. So the nature of their teaching is sometimes quite profound and assumes a, a knowledge base that can be a stumbling block for us as, as uh, we start our practice. But our great source of uh, places to look uh, to continue our study. So those are important letters. And then finally, there are letters that are direct uh, debate, confrontation, and, um, and stance uh, of very strong positions in strict Buddhist thought uh, with tremendous scholarship backing up Nitrin's scholarship and assertions to uh, authorities that um, are doing uh, either teaching erroneous ideas that are not strictly correct in Buddhism, other sects, other teachers, so on and so forth, or uh, leaders of the country, rulers of the country. So, Because as I've said before, in Japan at that time, um, the philosophy slash religious organizations and the government were like two hands of the same body. So if he was to remonstrate or to debate with uh, the religious authorities of the day, he would also be doing the same argumentation with the rulers of the country, albeit with a different uh, vernacular. In other words, when he would debate with other Buddhist leaders about how they're following erroneous views, he would uh, back up his assertions with a lot of uh, uh, scholarship from Buddhism itself uh, because he was talking to people who should be well read in Buddhism. Whereas when he wrote the same kinds of debates or remonstrations with the rulers, uh, he didn't assume such a knowledge base, but was still, quote, in a, in a more, in a sense, more about the governance of the people and the behavior of a ruler. So he, he, the nature of his um, scholarship and the, his quotations from the, the, uh, the writings of Buddhism um, would be more directed specifically toward that aspect of ruling rather than uh, scholarship and practice uh, to the, uh, the religious leaders. Does that make sense? But from those letters, we gain some really profound insights into the nature of the Buddhist practice and how to practice uh, correctly. Um, so uh, we can say that the Gosho is broad and vast and takes a long time to go through and all that. But if we remember that there are really 
at least four strong divisions in the in the teachings, then we can see it as more uh, well rounded, and uh, uh, these these short go shows can be uh, nice little insights and and very easy kind of daily advice kind of thing. And then when we get more doctrinal, then we uh, we know we have to hunker down and really. Um, uh, ingest the information fully it gives us uh, we may have to pause uh, which is why I break them down into parts not only it takes time so we don't have limited time right uh, but they're uh, sources uh, or directions uh, for us to take for additional study correct so uh, with all that said um, what else? Oh, I also wanted to remind you, as I do uh, on the screen here, but some of you may not be watching the videos, you will get the uh, uh, audio transcriptions via the Buddhahood podcast. And so I encourage anyone who's having trouble finding time to watch the videos, uh, you can download easily the podcasts so that you can then play them in your car or as you're working, so on and so forth, as one does with podcasts. So the Buddhahood podcast, three words, that's the name of the podcast, and you will get the oral transcriptions of these videos available on that. Having said that, I'm not sure I've covered all of the sutras that I've done on this channel on the podcast. I'll have to look. Um, and once again, in the comments, let me know uh, if you want me to uh, to um, do the oral transcriptions of um, different playlists that I have on this YouTube channel, like the Virmalakirti or the Lankavaktara. It comes up a lot. Um, and I don't know that I've posted all the Lankavaktara Sutra um, transcriptions on this podcast channel yet. I will check. But uh, it still would be good to hear from you on what areas you're more uh, interested in learning about. All right. Now, with all of that, uh, reply to the lay priest of Ko. Uh, I think they said there's only, I've read that there's only a couple of letters of this nature. Uh, Nietzsche wrote one to the lay priest and the other the lay nun, uh, both of Ko, which were... Uh, uh, local pre or local monks um, that um, lived on the island of Sado where uh, Nitrin was exiled, and they were very good to him. They brought him offerings and supported him, and uh, uh, were very kind to him. And now that he's left Sado Island and he's living at this time, I think in Minobu, uh, he. Um, uh, he writes uh, to, in this case, the the uh, male, the monk, um, and uh, let's see. Oh yeah, because as usual, he's received something from him, but he's uh, wanting to give him and his wife uh, encouragement as well as thanks. Uh, on their practice and of course he's not going to miss the opportunity to throw in a little bit of uh, teaching. <laughs> so um without further stalling <laughs> here we go i have received two paper bags of sea lava ten bundles of seaweed one paper bag of algae and one bunch of mushrooms now you know lava is a, a form of seaweed as well so these were uh, you know japan is very much a uh a fisherman's uh country um, they are an island, and uh, Nitrun was born into a fisherman family, so you know, obviously uh, he would have a great um, uh, joy in receiving these kinds of offerings uh, to help sustain him, right? So he goes on, the human mind is inconsistent. It is an ever-changing and unfixed I thought it, would, it was wondrous that you pledged uh, your resolve in my teachings while I was in the province of Sado. 
and your sincerity in sending your husband all the way here is even more remarkable. So this is obviously to the wife. The provinces we live in are far apart, and months and years have passed, so I was concerned that you might slacken in your resolve. However, you are increasingly demonstrating the depth of your resolute mind and conviction and accumulating good deeds. Surely this is not a result of practice over just one or two previous lifetimes. In other words, um, you, you've, uh, you've recently taken up my teachings and you have great resolve and I thank you and appreciate you for that. But the depth of your sincerity since we haven't seen each other for so long um, is obviously um, more uh, deeply practiced and uh, that I uh, might have believed from just our short time of knowing each other. You must have been steadfast uh, Buddhist for a long time and having come to my teachings you are now you know, progressing in your practice and, and that resolve is staying with you. Uh, so he's uh, uh, admiring them for their resolve, right? He goes on, Because the Lotus Sutra is difficult to believe, the Buddha assumes various forms, such as that of one's child, a parent, or wife, to enable one to take resolute mind and conviction in it. However, you have no children and live alone as husband and wife. The Sutra states, quote, The living beings in it, the threefold world, are all my children, end quote. If this is so, then Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lord of Teachings, must be a compassionate father to both of you. I, Nichiren, must be your child. But, wishing to save the people of Japan, I am residing for the time being in the central part of the country. The meritorious deeds you have accumulated in previous uh, experiences are indeed precious. When the Mongols come pouring into Japan, please make your way here. So again, this is a time, uh, as we spoke in the previous uh, sutra, uh, Gosho, this is a time of great upheaval in Japan. And there's a lot of people who are scared. Um, anyway, the politics are flinging. It's, it's a very t scary time. And these friends uh, of uh, Nitrin, um, obviously getting older, and uh, they're concerned they live on Sado Island, a small island, and uh, the Mongols are coming, right? So, and since you have no sons, he says, please consider coming here to live with me in your old age. Uh, no place is secure, but be convinced that the Buddhahood, that Buddhahood is the final abode. With my deep respect, Nichiren. So, um, encouragement, appreciation for the gifts he's received from them, the support he's received from them, acknowledgement of their long-term uh, practice and their uh, great resolve to uh, stay with Nichiren's teachings and his school of Buddhism, and uh, an offer to them in a in a very uh, you know family was is everything in Japan. It certainly was then. Um, and we can discuss on all the ways that's true and and all the ways that's true globally. But in Japan, uh, you can see that in uh, regular conversation, again, this is one of those letters that's kind of a, a deeply personal and less doctrinal. Um, still, Nichiren demonstrates that with uh, the teachings of Buddhism, this honor uh, and filial piety uh, within the structure of family is very important. And in terms of Buddhism, Shakyamuni, because he is the teacher of this realization of awakening of our Buddhahood, functions as our parent. Remember, parent, teacher, sovereign, the three qualities of, a, of Buddhahood. Um, of bodhis uh, yeah, Buddhahood. So, um, ad, as bodhisattvas, we um, uh, emulate in the Buddha way, right? Um, so, he's doing the same, and he's saying that um, they are part of the family as they're uh, the children of, the, of Buddha, um, but also because uh, they are living in the same time period, 
uh, their support has been such that Nitrin has felt as if they were his parents, um, which is a very honorif uh, honorific thing for him to uh, illustrate the depth of his feeling for them, right? Um, and he goes further in saying that, you know, in this time of upheaval, upheaval right now, and as you get older uh, and you are childless, so you don't have a child in your family uh, to continue your good name, to inherit your uh, your name and your for, your whatever, your holdings and so forth. Um, please come to me as I will act as your filial child uh, and I will harbor you in your old age and take care of you. Uh, and um, that, that is, that is a deeply um, beautiful offering Nitrin is making um, of appreciation to this couple, right? So um, that's it for this, uh, this short letter. Um, again, a teaching of compassion and uh, phileo responsibility and how it extends beyond your blood. But uh, in our sense as Buddhists, if we could all see everyone as our parents or teachers or, or, or children or we uh, theirs, um, I think we would look upon one another with a, a different eye. So, a beautiful little letter. And uh, with that, I'll encourage you again, um, if it's useful to you, please use the Buddhahood podcast available everywhere. And uh, comment. Let me know what you want to hear. Uh, have a wonderful day. And if I say, uh, one more time, <laughs> I'm going to beat my head into a desk. <laughs> but <laughs> I have to stop doing that. Anyway. Thank you once again. I will let you go. Namo myo